Welcome to Park Info. I'm Gary Buskowski. I work for the Hoffman Estates Park District. We're here with Jack Pizzo from Pizzo Associates, who is considered one of the foremost experts in the Chicagoland area in the Midwest on the art of restoration of natural areas. Jack, I've heard terms like bioswale and rain gardens. What, what are those and, and what relationship do they have to natural plant plantings? Well, a bioswale and a rain garden are nothing more than perennial gardens. They can be planted organized or they can be planted random, like we see behind us. And what they're designed to do is you guide the stormwater in there during a rain event, and the deep-rooted native perennials have punctured holes in the ground that allow the stormwater to infiltrate into the ground, which reduces the amount that flows across the ground, which then helps urban flooding. So really, a rain garden and a bioswale are nothing more than perennial gardens, and they should be managed as landscapes, which then give them, they become aesthetically pleasing part of the landscape in corporate settings, parks, and in people's houses and, and condominium complexes. Why not just plant grass? The, the grass we're standing on right now, Kentucky bluegrass and the fescues that are in it, only have a four inch deep root system whereas our native plants can have up to a six to 10 foot deep root system. And that punctures hole in this tough clay that allow the water to percolate down into, alongside of that prairie root system. Whereas when the top four inches of this root, the soil in here with the bluegrass root system in place gets saturated, the water runs across it and has to then be dealt with in the creeks and streams and then those ultimately flow out of their banks and into people's houses. From the nutrient standpoint, do bioswales help in cleansing the water? We've heard a lot about Lake Erie and the Great Lakes being uh, contaminated with nutrient, high nutrient levels. Yes. Uh, uh, natural areas like this help in that? Yes, so what happens is water's flowing across the, the landscape and encounters a, an area of, of na natural plants or native plants uh, is that the soil is alive with microorganisms, fungi, bacteria, the plants themselves. So the nutrients encounter those and they're taken up by those plants and eaten by the bacteria and fungi. And the, de the depth of the root system it means that the, the soil is alive all the way down to the bottom of the root system. Whereas here on a traditional landscape with this grass, the root system is only three to four inches deep. It, you end up with that so the very little living area called rhizosphere where the roots occur, that where the living organisms can occur. So most of those nutrients will shed right off of this into the water. And then what happens is you get algae that takes advantage of those excess nutrients. Thanks, Jack.